Hey yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy Dino and we back with another video with some crazy clips from all over the world. I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you all for hanging out. Let's hop right into it. It's a big kitty. No. Not gonna lie, I love big kitties, and that kitty looked more like it was scared of everyone than anything. So, in 2018, a Twitter user started a thread regarding the similarities between William Shakespeare and Anne Hathaway's husband. Mm -hmm. And the claim was that, you know, they look so similar, Anne Hathaway's husband has to be William Shakespeare reincarnated. And then, it gets deeper, the name similarities. Like, the fact that William Shakespeare looks exactly like Anne Hathaway's husband, and William Shakespeare was also married to a woman named Anne Hathaway. It's weird. So along with the resemblances and the name coincidences, there's also the fact that Shakespeare once wrote his wife a love letter and it said, and I quote, life is too short to love you only once. I promise to search for you in the next life. Yo, that's wild. They do look so similar in their names. Like, it's just too wild, man. I think it... it, it I don't know, man. That's just... <laughs> bread and circus. Bread and circus. We literally were re-engineered to become a slave race on this planet. Enki had an idea. says, look, let us take the existing being on this planet and add our essence to them and get them to bear the load of the labor. So basically create a slave race. Not from dust, not from actual, like, you know, the Bible says, you take some clay and wet clay and spit on it and blah, blah, blah. No, from actually from taking a being that's here already, genetically tinkering with it, making it, inserting a worship gene, which we know the gene for worship was inserted into the genome. We know that for a fact now through genetic studies and it can be turned on and it can also be turned off we'll get them to worship us they'll think we're god and they'll do the work just to honor us and they put them out there to do all the work and take the load away from the egg the working class anunnaki so you're trying to say that we're basically artificial intelligent robots like bio robots and that uh they have buttons that can make us just worship them i don't know man this guy's out there all the time but fallen angels called the Anunnaki, and these were black angels. They descended to earth because these are the angels that rebelled against God, some of them. And they were part of ancient Sumerian culture. This is where the fallen angels mated with humans. And it's also depicted and written in ancient Sumerian tablets. And they said that the Anunnaki manipulated human DNA. So this story sounds familiar, doesn't it? And it sounds like what? Whenever the fallen angels mated with human women. But in today's day and age, people look at the Anunnaki's as extraterrestrials. And you can even find the History Channel doing videos about the Anunnaki and how they created human beings. They didn't create humans, they created a subdivision of humans. And, you know, these fallen angels take credit for creating humanity in general. They take the role, or they play the role of God. And this is how you know these are fallen angels, right? Here. I'm really glad that he switched up and started calling them fallen angels because that's exactly what they are. You got all that dirt on the bottom of your feet. Damn, damn, you fail. Oh, damn, you fail. <laughs> you all right? Please shut up, Mom. You're making no help at all. <laughs> Yeah, she wasn't no help at all. Look at her just standing there. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. He's just telling you to get out. No way, man. In no way, man. Get out of there. The term metaverse was coined in the 1992 American science fiction novel Snow Crash 
which described a very large 3D virtual world parallel to our IRL lives. In this virtual world, people can interact through their digital avatars. In addition physiological needs, such as eating, sleeping, etc., must be fulfilled in the physical world. The rest, such as work, entertainment, socializing, etc., can be done in the virtual world. However, its more recognized source of ideas can be traced back to the novel, True Names, published in 1981, which conceived a virtual world that can give people an immersive experience. The metaverse is essentially a digital representation of the physical world into a virtual world. People are no longer just viewers, through the digital avatars we can total immersion into the virtual world. Whether in terms of reality or space-time, the metaverse is a virtual space in real time, a real digital world, it has both digital replicas of the real world and creations of the virtual world. Mm, yeah, Snow Crash was a pretty decent book. I read it. Um, yeah, that's where we're headed now. It really is. We're headed to a metaverse, whether we like it or not. Wow, dude, like, I don't know that you need to be piloting a private plane if that's how you're going to fly. Yo, you want to see something cool? No. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. I think I might just put a knife in I it. I think that's a really good idea. See if it works. That's about right. Beautifully. <laughs> it's working beautifully. If there was any doubt that our mailman had found our TikTok account, I think those uh, doubts have been settled. <laughs> if you haven't seen my other videos, a couple times when our mail guy comes and delivers packages to the door, the last one he had a mail crate on his head, and he was a uh, James Bond mailman. <laughs> Today, the kids were playing in the room, and they said that someone with a box in their head was coming to the front door. So, of course, I'm like, what the heck is going on? And go to look and see the post office truck outside, and I knew exactly what was going on. Oh, that's great. The comments in the previous videos I posted were all over the place, some saying that he was in witness protection and didn't want to be recorded. <laughs> uh, a lot of people thought he was just having fun. There was a lot of mail carriers on there that chimed in as well. Uh, I'm guessing from this video that kind of settles any any doubt what his intentions were. And of course, if he ever did come to me and ask me to pull him down, I would. But it looks like he's having a pretty good time with it. He's yeah, uh, getting a lot more creative, too, with the disguises. <laughs> Last time it was just a post office box. Now it's an Amazon box with the eyes cut out in it, which is pretty hilarious. If y'all are interested in any of these cameras that I used, I do have most of them posted in videos. Check them out. We'll see what happens next time. Well, that's hilarious, man. I wish more people were like that in the world. We need more of that. I don't know what I think of that. I really don't. 
It's not zoomed in enough or anything. Like, it just looks like a dot floating. You remember this, the man in the video who jumped across the bench, attacked the judge in the middle of his sentencing. Well, he's now facing new charges. The result of his actions landing him a battery, extortion, and even an attempted murder charge. It was oh my goodness. on video. ABC's Melissa Adan shares why judges from all levels say this incident is not alone and that their safety is in jeopardy. Deobra Redden was back in court Tuesday, this time on charges related to that attack on the Las Vegas judge when he leapt across the bench attacking the judge during his original sentencing last week. In this viral video, 27-year-old law clerk Michael Lasso is credited with aiding the judge after authorities say Redden punched the judge, hit her with an object, and pulled out her hair. I just thought when he first hopped over that desk, he was going for the door. And when he didn't go for the door and instead he starts charging at the judge, I was just in shock, and I just reacted. ABC's Kena Whitworth met with Lasso, who was being hailed a hero. What did that judicial bench look like in the aftermath? In the aftermath, it was a bloody scene. Um, there was just blood everywhere. On Monday, Redden, wearing a spit mask and in shackles, sentenced up to four years in prison for his original case. As for the case against the judge, a new judge presiding over the case, charging him with attempted murder, battery, and extortion charges, among others. Mm -mm -mm. The incident sparking a larger issue to safety of judge. <laughs> U.S. District Court Judge Esther Salas knows about the threat. Her that's, <laughs> that's absolutely wild. I cannot believe dude did that. Like, what were you thinking, man? <laughs> I can prove that God is real without even showing you a Bible verse. Jesus died around 30, 33 AD. Genesis was created almost 3,000 years before Jesus was even born. So if you take the names of each character in Genesis 5, Adam, Seth, Enosh, Canaan, Mahele, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah, if you take the root Hebrew name and translate that into English, this is what it reads. Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching his death shall bring the despairing comfort and rest. Oh, wow. This is literally talking about Jesus before he was even born. 3,000 years before he was born. Now, atheists and anyone else who wants to disprove this, how is this possible? I don't know, man. That's some cool stuff right there. Why is he frozen? When the decision was read out in court, they cried and cheered. Police, men and women, paramedics and staff from QPS and QAS. How does everyone feel? Excellent, I think. <laughs> I think that speaks volumes for how my clients feel about the decision. They refused to get vaccinated during the COVID pandemic and launched a landmark legal challenge. The case was heard in 2022 when the mandates were still in force. Today, 18 months on, Justice Glenn Martin found directions by the police commissioner in September and December 2021 were unlawful under Section 58 of the Human Rights Act. Interesting. While for QAS, the Director General's direction was found to have no effect. They're being vindicated uh, a lot of them uh, some of them have been facing disciplinary proceedings clive palmer revealing he funded the cases and is prepared to pay for more but this case was never going to be dropped because i'm behind it the former attorney general turned health minister at pains to point out the case was won on a technicality it was a decision about how directions were issued not the fact that mandatory COVID vaccinations were contrary to human rights. Today's decision prevents the vaccine mandates from being enforced and protects the workers from disciplinary action, but lawyers say it doesn't protect anyone else. The limit on human rights was justified because of the pandemic. The health minister says any workers who quit for refusing to get the jab are welcome to reapply. It was only a partial victory for the groups involved in this legal that's interesting. They were laying people off for not getting vaccinated. And, and as like says, they're generally considered to be like roughly five great extinctions. Earth's climate also changes pretty radically over the course of like say ten thousand years. You know, it can shift from being extremely hot to extremely cold. You can really go down a deep rabbit hole.
if you read the about ice ages deep rabbit hole i mean i think it's just interesting so interesting That's that, that that how much earth's climate has changed and even where the where the magnetically where the poles are have has shifted over time the i think there was probably something significant that happened at the um in in the last ice age because we don't see any evidence of writing and that was about 10,000 years ago something something happened around i think around that ice age that because we we see no writing how do no, you no writing before that ice age and we we start to see writing pop up in multiple places on earth after that after the most recent colloquially termed ice age hmm yeah be brought to Middle Tennessee. That's according to a notice from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. It named Nashville, Davidson County, Murfreesboro, and Franklin. The notice described the migrants as non-citizens who were going through the immigration process. DHS did not specify when or how many immigrants will be brought to each city, but you can read the full notice right now on our WSMB4 news app. What are they doing? <laughs> Mr. President, for months when you were asked about your age, you would respond with the words, watch me. Watch Many me. American people have been watching, and they have expressed concerns about your age. That is they, your judgment. They, that is your is judgment. That is not the judgment concerns, of the press. They express concerns about your mental acuity. They say that you are too old. Mr. President, in December, you told me that you believe there are many other Democrats who could defeat Donald Trump. So why does it have to be you now? Why, what is your answer to that I'm the most question? qualified person in this country to be president of the United States and finish the job I started. <laughs> The conduct of the response in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip, has been um, over the top. I think that, uh, as you know, initially the president of Mexico, El Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. I talked to him. I convinced him to open the gate. I talked to Bibi to open the gate on the Israeli side. I've been pushing really hard, really hard to get humanitarian assistance in. Oh, we're just going to move on. I don't know. It looks like she's feeling herself. I don't, I'm not going to read more into that. She's like enjoying it, you know, having a good time. Like, that's what it looks like to me. So this scares governments. Why? If they do not know where your income is coming from and what you're spending, then they can't collect income taxes, mm. which is the largest single revenue source for almost every government. Yeah. Now, in my mind, income taxes, at least in America, are illegal. They're unconstitutional. And until 1913, we didn't have them. Nevertheless, Today, income taxes is the majority of the United States revenue source. And that is wild because it gets wasted on things we don't want it to get wasted on. The Honorable Member for Belle Chambly. It's important that all Quebecers and Canadians should know that the government has an unfortunate habit of finding scapegoats for the mistakes they've made over the past eight years. My first question is quite straightforward. Who is responsible? Whose fault is Arrive Can? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, while the pandemic was raging as a government, we tried to find various ways every way possible to protect Canadians' health and safety. But even in times as difficult as that, we have clear rules that have to be followed around contracting and procurement. And we expect the investigators and the responsible authorities to do their job so that we can find out exactly how this unacceptable situation occurred. For clarity, 
I think we can assume from now on that the person responsible for everything and all the corrective measures that will be need, needed is the Prime Minister of Canada. What has he put in place in terms of an investigation? For example, are contracts going to be suspended to this company starting back in November? Will they get any more contracts with the government? Uh, uh, they were getting contracts before. So what kind of investigation is going to be conducted and who's going to conduct it and how long, what's the time frame? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. He's not a Mr. Speaker, once we began to see that there were some irregularities or some rules that weren't followed by the public service, internal processes within the public service were triggered and at the same time, we know that other authorities, including the police, have gotten involved. And we expect all that work to be done to ensure that all the rules uh, were followed and, and if not, which con that there are consequences as appropriate. Oh. It just seems like the whole world's governments are all falling apart, all getting caught in lies, all being caught out. Okay, so you got some people in your woods on your property? I mean, if you don't know who they are, that's pretty scary, but it seems like a staged video. <laughs> oh, that's hot! Other video that we saw was of a woolly mammoth uh, in a tundra. We also saw a little monster lighting up a candle, and none of it was done by any animators. All you have to do is enter in a text prompt, you hit generate, and it creates what you see in front of you. Again, nothing was shot in this case. It's all AI generated. And obviously, this is a concern in Hollywood where you have animators, illustrators, visual effects workers who are wondering, how is this going to affect my job? And we have estimates from uh, trade organizations and unions that have tried to project the impact of AI. 21% of US film, TV, and animation jobs predicted to be partially or wholly replaced by generative AI by just 2026, Tom. So this is already happening. And I have to also point out this tech is from the makers of ChatGPT, so very much a, a big technological jump for that company. Yeah, but so scary. But here's the thing. Uh, there are some things inside the announcement today that came from uh, OpenAI with regards to the way they would protect you, for example, using my likeness. So uh, use of policies that they already have in place, the company says, will reject violent or hateful images, sexual content, celebrity likenesses, IP of others. Uh, they also say that they're engaging policymakers, educators. Good. Good. That's just the start of it. Homes here in the gated community at the Country Club of Detroit in Gross Point Farms. The organized burglary teams hitting here over the last weekend. And if a home backs up to trees or woods, it becomes a target. Thieves hiding there until they see their chance. Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard first sounded the alarm in September after huge homes in Bloomfield Township were hit, then homes on private drives in Birmingham. The losses were in the millions. In our area, they are targeting jewelry, precious metals, high-end items such as purses, um, electronics, 
uh, currency, high-end watches, and if there's a safe that's not attached or they can either break into on scene or carry, they'll do that. Now remember, hmm. a teen was arrested and charged in Bloomfield Township with a string of car break-ins and some burglaries. But tonight, sources continue to point to what the sheriff pointed to at the very start, that other organized teams out of South America have been hitting high-end homes out west and now have made their home right here. Typically in our area, it's between 5 and 9 p.m., uh, preferred targets on a lot of these across the country are homes that are isolated. They back up to wooded areas, trails, golf courses. Here's another thing that we're not hearing or seeing in these high-end burglaries. Look, there's no video of these guys. There's video cameras everywhere, especially on these homes, but they're able to get around that somehow. There are alarm systems all over these homes, in the homes, outside of the homes. Well, I'm just saying, at least they're only stealing from like rich people. That's crazy looking. What in the hell even is that? That's cool looking, man. That's super cool looking. I'm not sure what I was looking at, but that was cool. Put your finger right, right next to it. There, camera's kind of crazy. So you heard the commotion and then you heard the shots. Yeah. How fast would you say it was from the time you heard the mm -hmm. fighting to the time those shots were fired? Well, they were fighting for like one minute and then that's when he pulled up the gun. I hid behind the trash can, but that wasn't the best choice because I was still standing up. I was trying to look for my grandpa and my cousin and my uncle. Yeah. So I lifted my hand like that, like, because the sun was on my way. So, because there's, like, sun a lot. Yeah. And then, um, when I lifted my hand, they shot me. Here. Felt like, like a burn and sharp knife cutting me. No, the bullet went through right here. And then it went like that. Wow. Yeah. And then where did it, and then it exited out your side? Mm -hmm. Wow. You were having fun with your family as you should have been. Uh, do you think that you would be willing or go to you know, kind of a large parade or, you know, gathering again? No. Mm. Why not? Because you never know what could happen. It sounds like it didn't just end on Wednesday. It sounds like it, it, it's still, it's still, yeah, it's still, it's going to be, um, Remember all the time. That's sad. Hear this, the NYPD has just released a statement saying that the Trenda Aragua, a Venezuelan known gang which is fully operational in the country now according to authorities, is responsible for over 160 thefts occurring from August of last year to just recently. Where they are on these mopeds, as you can see here in this picture, dragging their victims across the street as they're trying to steal their belongings. Now, the NYPD has also identified IT personnel within these crime organizations that are literally hacking into the phones of the victims, wiping out their bank accounts completely. Sending the money to these kingpins who are recruiting these illegal migrants all over the country and back to Venezuela. Let me know what you guys think. Like and follow for more. That's wild. Um, I'm not sure how accurate that is, but if that is accurate, then that is more of a reason to uh, get control of the situation. Now enjoy this fun photo collage of some of your favorite stars and <laughs> politicians who speak about the need to reduce our carbon footprint, but who are always on private planes. That's right, all of them. If you don't see a celebrity's picture here, it's because we weren't allowed to use it. 
<laughs> or their series got canceled. <laughs> But all the environmentalists of Hollywood and Washington do it. Their position on climate change is, we must do more to stop pouring carbon into the air, except for me when I want to go somewhere and then I take a private jet. Now enjoy this fun photo collage. Can't argue with it. Your favorite. Cannot argue with it. <laughs> At the top of that hill, you can see all the way up there, the top of Caribou Lane. That's where that one house came sliding off its foundation. It sent a piano flying into the street. You may remember. So crews and residents just doing everything they can to try to prevent that kind of damage from happening again. Crews have been working diligently ahead of the storm. They're trying to clear out the wreckage of the home and also a lot of debris in that area so they can stabilize as much of the hillside as they can to protect the homes below it. Now, this all happened two weeks ago when those heavy rains caused that home at the top of the hill to just topple down. It was so forceful that a piano was ejected from it, landing on a carport before bouncing onto the street. Wow. Now, two of the surrounding homes up there are red tagged. Crews are hard at work hauling out as much as they can before the next round moves in. It also appears that they're trying to build some sort of a berm or a dam to prevent mud flow from coming down this very steep and narrow street. Of course, the main concern here is the saturated hillsides. They're already so soaked. And people who had to be evacuated during the last storm have been doing everything they can to protect their homes. Listen here. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous. Uh, you know, there's a big hill up there that uh, gave way and there's more hill next to it. And it's going to be saturated and we got more rain coming in. I hope they can get that sorted out. And, you know, that sucks for the people who lost their homes already. So that's what Earth supposedly looks like when you leave it. Shock. I mean, it's. I mean, I, like you said, I was trying to only report on what we knew at the time, but obviously, when that came out, it's absolutely shocking that you would have FBI sitting on this information in 2019 and then seeding the idea that there would be a hack and leak coming. I mean, it wasn't just Aspen Institute; also Stanford came out and they used that as a pre as a pretext to attack the Pentagon Papers principle upheld by the Supreme Court that when journalists like us are leaked information, we can publish it and we're protected by the First Amendment. We saw Stanford, we saw Stanford Institute attacking that precedent and saying journalists should no longer follow the Pentagon Papers principle. They should no longer report on information leaked to them. They should not do what Matt and I and Alex just did with publishing these files leaked to us by a patriotic whistleblower who was absolutely, who knew absolutely that this was wrong, that it was a violation of the First Amendment, that it was a violation of it in the spirit and the letter. And that's the kind of, I mean, to see these institutions of the establishment argue against this great American tradition of journalism and the First Amendment is quite appalling. It's shocking. Shocking. Uh, Ms. Sabramanya, here in the House, we are exposing the U.S. government censorship by proxy, which uses social media companies, academia, and private companies to circumvent the First Amendment. At the same time, we are watching with horror as liberal democracies in Europe and Canada are not even trying to hide their efforts to center, censor their citizens. We know where this is going, and without exposure and reform, we could be doomed to the same fate. In your opening statement, you discussed the impacts of the Online News Act and the other censorship efforts seen in European nations, and you issue a stern warning that I hope all Americans will take to heart. Could you describe the trends that you are seeing and specifically what tools or mechanisms of control these governments are trying to exert over free speech? Mm -mm -mm. We all knew that laptop was real, and we all knew that it was a PSYOP campaign for distracting from other things in the first place. We're not dumb. Talk about a bold robbery. At lunchtime today, three people held up a Gucci store in the meatpacking district of Manhattan, just a few blocks west of Chelsea. They had a gun, and before they left, they robbed the high-end store, and then they just drove away. Talk about chutzpah. The good news is that no one was hurt. Okay. <laughs> so three dudes robbed a Gucci store. A Senate bill that will provide billions in aid to Ukraine is being held up in the Republican-controlled House, and the White House is blaming that lack of funding for the fall of a key Ukrainian city. Meanwhile, Russia is richer than ever before. Our Nick Payton Walsh explains why. Blue, tranquil, a world away from Ukraine's front lines. 
We headed out to where Russia may be filling its war chest to a record high. Crude oil tankers, sometimes engaged in opaque, secretive transfers. These two, under sanctions busting suspicions in the past. The big one from Russia's Black Sea coast, transferring crude to the smaller one, which also came from Russia. Out here, you get a feeling of how hard it is to keep track of all of this. Just transfers occurring out here in the blue expanse. Massive trade of billions of dollars of oil, some of which ends up helping the Kremlin fund its war. Tens of millions of barrels of crude likely transferred like this last year. And where it ends up often unclear, which is the point. That's probably about 60 million barrels that are being transferred in the middle of the ocean purposefully. So you really needed to have a reason because it's much easier not to do that. These two have a messy past, said the shipping monitor that led us to them. The larger tanker that you guys saw was actually owned by a large company that bought a lot of these tankers uh, when Russian sanctions came out, right? And so they've been heavily associated with what we call the Dark Fleet, which is the these tankers that are servicing Russia, Iran, Venezuela, and other sort of sanctions concerns. So like they got a whole bunch of oil tankers and stuff doing things that are shady and keeping it hidden. That's what's going on. Talk about a bold robbery. Well, you guys, there's finally an update in the Trinity Poe case. She had a hearing today and was given a $75,000 bond. That means all they're going to have to pay for her to get out of jail is $7,500. <laughs> I mean... Can you believe that? Apparently down there in Georgia where she lives, you can unalive the baby and get out of jail for less than 8,000 bucks. Now, if you don't know this case, Trinity is a beauty queen from Donaldsonville, Georgia, who was dating this guy, Jay Williams. And this is his son, Jackson Williams, who at the time of his death was 18 months old. They were visiting Trinity at her college campus and Jay left for a little bit to get them something to eat. And when he returned, the baby was unresponsive, so he rushed him to the hospital, and ultimately, Trinity ended up getting arrested and charged for his murder. Jay had the baby pretty much his entire life. He posted this on his Facebook just five days ago when it was a month. This family is grieving so badly, and I'm sure getting the news that Trinity's bond was only $75,000 is just like putting salt into a wound. Now, while she's out, she cannot return back to the college campus. They are done with her, so apparently her parents are going to go and pick up all of her stuff. Now, I haven't seen any documentation as far as a trial date or anything, but I will be sure to keep you updated. What are mm -mm. your thoughts about the $75,000 bond? Let me know in the comments. I think it's total crap. So which one is it? $7,500 or $75,000? She switched it twice. That's a sad situation, though. All right, so I got one more for you guys. When we display you the facts about what is occurring to the planet, you inquire why. When we clarify why, you inquire what to do. When we propose what to do, you simply avoid attributing it to God or the forces of nature. Speak as it will be, so it will be, or worse, let it erase all from Earth. But it was not God or nature that destroyed the ocean, our only defense. People have achieved this with planets in the last century. How to destroy or consume something, we are pioneers. And how to solve the problem, let God or nature do it. What? Is it weak to take responsibility and take care of your home like a boss? Yes, this is an attempt to reach your conscience. How many people are left on our planet? Here's what determines our future now. And listen to those who have survived this year. Do you truly desire to be in their position? Hmm. I'm not sure if that was from a movie or what, but those were some good words. And that's another video for the archives. Thank you all for coming and hanging out. I appreciate everybody stopping through every time I post a new video. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and then hit that notification bell. It really helps us out, really gets us going in the algorithm. Anyways, I hope that everyone's well and that you have a great rest of your day, afternoon, evening, whatever it might be for you. And until next time.